children, is Mrs. Lee here? It's assembly number, count with me, 5, 10, 15, and two more. And that makes, yes, you're right, 17. We're on assembly 17. It's time to look at the board. Right, what's the time, Mr. Wolf? Oh, it's a tricky one, children. The minute hand, that's the long hand, is on the two. But if we count all these tiny little increments, we'll find out that there are 10 because they are the minutes. So let's count with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So the minute hand has moved 10 minutes past. The short hand, that's the hour hand, is just slightly off the number five. So what we're saying here is it's 10 minutes past five. Ooh, 10 minutes past five in the morning. Hopefully you're still asleep for your grown-ups. 10 minutes past five at night. You might be having your dinner. You might be taking the dog out for a walk. Who knows? Right, where are we going to next? Language of the month. Yes, we're doing Lithuanian, aren't we? So we've learnt some new words. Do you remember that we can say hello in Lithuanian? We can say goodbye. And I'm sure you have been learning other words because I know what you're like. You always want to go the extra mile, don't you? So, labas is hello. Ooh, where should we go next? Take one step back. It's our Makaton sign of the week and we know that that is bird. And in my basket here, I have got ooh, a book for in a moment. Still got my bird's nest that I was showing you. And really, really lovely. I saw on tapestry that lots of you had downloaded this, ready to do the big garden bird watch. How exciting. How exciting. Well, I really hope that you've been enjoying the snow. I'm still wrapped up quite warm because in school it's very, very cold because the snow is still lingering. Put your hand up if you went outside and made a snowman. Oh, that's lots of you. I was telling the children when I was on playground duty yesterday that we didn't make a snowman in our house, we made a snow pig. There you go. It looks very cool on our front garden. Right. Oh, what else have we been thinking about? We've been thinking about animals, haven't we? We've been thinking about the birds. And then yesterday, Mrs. Short talked to us all about her horses at her stable. And today, I'm really, really, really happy to share with you a video of making a picture of animals. And Miss Stenning White and her lovely daughter, Neve, are going to show you how to do that with lots of paint. So you better ask your grown-up very, very politely at home. We won't be doing this in school, I'm afraid, but at home, if you can make a picture like Neve and Miss Stenning White. But before we get there, I'd like to read you this story. It's a really, really lovely story. It's called Why the Animals Came to Town. And it's written by a very famous man called Michael Foreman. And he's written lots and lots of stories. And I love this book, all right, because it's the animals talking to us. It's a story that has a message in it, and I think we should all listen carefully to that message. So, good listening ears. Brilliant. Why the Animals Came to Town by Michael Foreman. Whew, I was woken by the strangest sound. Quiet at first, but getting louder. The tramp, tramp, tramp of marching feet. Louder and louder down our street. I peeped round the curtain and in the evening light saw coming round the corner the most amazing sight. Every kind of animal from all around the world all coming down our street. Oh my gosh, look. You see? From the north came polar bears and reindeers two by two. From way out west came grizzly bears and moose and caribou. From the south came penguins and kangaroos with pandas from the east. Out of Africa came elephants and a herd of wildebeest. 
and antelope, armadillos and koalas, baboons and bison, beavers, bats, ostriches, meerkats, hippos, rhinos, chimpanzees, monkeys, moose and wallabies, leopards, lizards, lions and llamas, all coming down our street. Wow, that's a lovely picture. I think in a moment you might have a little look at Neve's picture of her zebra. Around the world the animals came and danced and pranced all down our street and as they danced they sang this song. Wakey, wakey, everyone! You've been asleep for far too long. Our world is burning, melting, sinking. Everywhere there's rubbish stinking. It's not a nice message, is it? There are dusty deserts where nothing grows and rising seas and melting snows. Smoke fills the sky and hides the sun. We think it's time something was done. Then an elephant scooped me from my room and in the cool light of the moon, the animals and I danced all night long under the starry sky. Oh, that sounds like fun. Around the town and through the park, dancing, dancing in the dark, by the river, in the square, wonderful animals everywhere. And as the sun came up, they took me home and waved goodbye. And then, oh God, our street was empty in the dawn. saw them. I, I, I really did. I really, really, really did. I hope you saw them too. And I hope you felt the same as me. How empty all the world would be without the animals roaming free. We can help to spread the word. It's time the animal's song was heard. Let's spread the message. You and me. That's why the animals came. You see? a lovely book isn't it it's got a good message in it in fact I'm just going to check when that book was written because I think it's been in our school for quite a while that book was written oh gosh in 2010 God, who can do the maths and work out how many years this book has been around and that message was written 2010 and we're now in 2021 I think we need to listen to that message. I think we need to start talking to our grown-ups, don't we? All right, we need to look after those animals. Anyway, I hope that you're outside looking at the birds. Um, that's one way of helping the animals, isn't it? Especially if you try to make something for them to eat. Having a look at all, if you look in the pack, you'll be able to see different ways of helping them to eat and different things that you can do. Right, I'm now going to leave you and I will see you at the end of the assembly for our school prayer. Um, enjoy this little video. Hopefully you'll feel creative afterwards. Ready? Three, two, one. Hello again. Right, so we've got our paint and our paper and we've got a few extra other bits like um, we've got a sponge here which we're going to use for the sky. Do you want to start that, Neve? You can start sweeping it across. We made some nice blue paint. We're going to use our sponge to sweep across the sky. <laughs> and we've got a fork as well, which we're going to use to do some grass. You can blow this. Yeah, you can dip it back in. It looks lovely. That's it. Sweep across again. So there's a very quick way of painting the sky. And we've cut a sponge into a nice cloud shape, so now Neve's going to dip that in the white paint. Yeah. That's it. Let's see if you can make some nice clouds in the sky. With the other side of the sponge. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Got some nice white fluffy clouds. Right, 
for the grass, we are putting on some green paint, really thick. And what we're going to do is we're going to use our fork and I'll take that. Put some nice wavy lines in the paint. Make it look like nice wavy grass. That's it. So you can use your fork to make some marks in your paint too. But you've got to remember to put the paint on really thick. Good job. Look at that lovely wavy grass blowing in the wind. So now we're going to use that sponge again and make some green splodges so we can cut them out to use for treetops. So you're going to give that a go, Neve. That's it. Make some nice splodges. Need a bit more paint. It, run it round in the paint, get more paint on it. That's it, now do some splodges. That's it. Right, so now we've got our lovely sponge tree tops. We've now got a couple of nice pinks. We've got a paintbrush, and I'm going to use a toothbrush. And we're going to flick, flick it make some blossom in our tree, some pretty pink blossom. Yeah. They look like little pink flowers. And that's a fun thing to use, doing a bit of flicking with your paintbrush or your toothbrush. Get messy fingers. And arms <laughs> and everything else by the looks of it, Neve. <laughs> now, Neve and I want a zebra in our picture too, so we're going to make some stripes. Now, we did think cotton buds would be a good thing to use um, to make some stripes or any kind of pattern really, but um, we didn't have any cotton buds. So, what we've done is wrapped some cotton pads around a stick, and I think that will work just as well, really. So we're going to do some nice black and white stripes. And that's it. There we go. I don't mind. We've got all our lovely black and white stripes and now we're going to let everything dry. And then once it's all dry, cut it all out and stick it all together to make a nice big picture. So now we've drawn our shapes out that we want to cut out from what we've painted. You can see there the treetops and the shapes of the zebra. And we've got sun to cut out too. And we've got some brown foam as well that we're going to use for the tree trunks. And there's our PVA glue. Neve's got her scissors at the ready to do all our cutting out and then we can stick it all together. Yeah, good cutting, Neve. A nice orange glittery sun. Neve's just cutting out the last zebra leg and we've got all our other pieces cut out now. And then you have to make sure you rearrange them on your picture first before you stick them down so you know where you want everything stuck before you stick it down. Good job Neve, thank you. So where do you want the sun Neve? Where are you going to put that? Yep. Uh, there you are. Leave the treetops. Here. That's a good spot for the sun. Um, I might get this on. It's alright. That's it. Get his legs where you want them. And his tail. There you go. 
go. I think we're nearly ready to stick everything down. Right, we're just gluing the zebra's ears on. Stuck everything else down. Well, we've still got the sun to stick on to. That's it, you give your zebra some nice big ears. Took a lot of time and teamwork to stick all this down, didn't it? Yeah, so there are lots of things at home that you can use to make pattern pictures. We've used sponges and a fork and cotton buds. You anyway, can do the sum. There you are, Neve. And uh, as long as you ask a grown-up to make sure you don't use anything that you're not supposed to, then uh, I'm sure there's plenty of things you can find at home to use to make some lovely pattern pictures. And for the finishing touches, give our zebra a nice little face, his eyes, his nose, let his nose go here, darling. That's fine, yeah, that's a good nose. Lovely, so let's have a look at it. Our finished picture. Hey. <laughs> there we are. Well, I hope you enjoyed our video and I hope we've given you some ideas of some craft you can do at home. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a lovely day. Maybe say bye-bye. Bye. Wow, that was an amazing picture. You've got to be brave and ask your grown-up if they will do that to work with you because it looked a bit messy, didn't it? Lots of clearing up. So if you do do it, make sure, all right, that you help with the clearing up. And we would love to see those pictures on tapestry. Right, we are going to finish there with our school prayer. Are you ready? Help me to do the things I should, to be to others kind and good, in all my work and all my play, to grow more loving every day. Amen. We need to grow more loving every day, don't we? Especially after looking after those animals. Keep warm, and I'll see you soon. Bye!